This video is brought to you by the Pros Closet. Stop waiting for your dream bike and start riding it. Whew, it's cold in here. You guys know that super annoying bike saying, what is it again? It's not shut up legs. It's not don't buy upgrades, ride upgrades. It's the other one. The other one that's like super common and super annoying. That's right. Just buy a 90s mountain bike. Ah, the 90s mountain bike seen as the pinnacle of bike design by a certain subset of bike nerds in a attempt to finally, hopefully put that comment to rest. I went out and bought a 90s mountain bike to see if it really stands up to the glory that some people say it is. Back in the 90s, I was too busy playing Street Fighter and breakdancing, so I wasn't really into mountain biking, so kind of missed that whole era of bikes. I wanted to see if they're as magical as people say they are, if they are even remotely close to the modern gravel bike, and what is the experience like of buying one in 2022? I know some of you have already flamed me in the comments before even watching this video, but bear with me. I actually do like the 90s mountain bike I ended up buying. It definitely needed some tweaks and it has its charm. The whole purpose of this video uh, is to share with you guys my experience of buying a 90s mountain bike in 2022, trying to get it up and running and doing that in a realistic context and not just kind of bandying the phrase, just buy a 90s mountain bike around. What I found is that there are some good aspects of it, which I will highlight in a different video. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna share with you guys five reasons why you shouldn't buy a 90s mountain bike. The first reason is availability. People say just buy a 90s mountain bike as if there was like a, a 90s mountain bike store. Depending on where you live, the stock and selection of vintage mountain bikes could either be really great, like wherever old shovel lives, his bikes are amazing but here it's kind of hit or miss. Quite literally, I've been checking in on our local Craigslist here in Missoula for about a year, waiting for one that wasn't overpriced, that looked like it was in rideable condition and was approximately the size that I could ride. And it took about a year to find the Schwinn Paramount. So I don't think you should go the 90s mountain bike route if uh, you don't mind being a little patient waiting weeks, months, if not an entire year for something to pop up. Not to mention, I think 90s or vintage mountain bikes are having a huge resurgence. Check out the stuff that Eric has done on Spindat, also the Monkey Shred channel, and of course, Old Shovel. It's a thing. It's no longer like the crusty bike co-op kind of thing. It's, it's a thing thing. And that's good and bad. Uh, there's more awareness of how useful uh, these great older bikes are. At the same time, there's kind of a, a serious collector market now, which is really snatching up the, the really desirable uh, vintage bikes. And that, that leads into reason number two why you shouldn't buy a 90s mountain bike is that uh, they're becoming kind of expensive. I think it's especially if you want a nice one from certain brands like, like Richie or a Bridgestone, people are asking 500 bucks to over well over a thousand bucks, sometimes 2000 bucks. So if you want a nice one, you're gonna have to pay for it. I think the secret is out. And while it's still possible to find a bargain in certain markets between their popularity online and people's access to the internet so they can see the, the true value of what they have, the deals are becoming less and less. The third reason why you shouldn't buy a vintage mountain bike is tools. You're gonna need a good set of tools to work on these bikes. Like I have a pretty decent set for modern bikes, but I found that I still have to buy specific cone wrenches and small wrenches and pin spanners just to work on this bike. I got the Schwinn Paramount locally for about $100 and I probably spent another $80 on tools plus another 60 bucks on replacement bits like new brake pads, shifter and brake cables, shifter and brake housing, new straddle cables, new tubes. There, there were a lot of expendables to be replaced. So when you see that $100 bike on Craigslist, that's actually just the start of your spending, unless by some fluke chance, the bike is perfectly maintained and ready to ride. And speaking about used or vintage bikes that are ready to ride, let me tell you about today's sponsor, The Pros Closet. The Pros Closet is where you can find used and new bikes that have been looked over by master mechanics. From April 14th to the 19th, they're having a spring sale where you can get $100 off of bikes over $1,000, free shipping, and up to $300 off select bikes. Go to the Pros Closet and find that gravel bike, I mean, 90s mountain bike of your dreams, and start riding today. No new cone wrenches or pin spanners necessary. Use the code below to help out the channel.
The fourth reason why you shouldn't buy a 90s mountain bike is standards. The 90s, much like today, was an era of lots of experimentation. And because of that, there are just all sorts of wacky standards. So don't expect your cache of modern bike parts to necessarily work with a vintage bike. For example, the Schwinn Paramount has a quill stem, and I thought that the uh, quill stems that I had for my RIV would work here. This bike, instead of using a 22.2 quill, actually uses a 25.4 not to be confused with 25.4 as the handlebar clamp, but the quill size. To use a handlebar I wanted and to get it into a position I needed, I first had to track down kind of a, a hard to find 25.4 quill, which I ordered and didn't work so good. So then I went down the route of getting a, a shim for a 22.2 to work with a 25.4, which is what's on here now. And that seems to work better. But needless to say, standard. Now I'm searching for a 26.6 seat post. That's another standard that would be in flux, as well as rear spacing. It's usually 135, but could be 130. Your rear wheel could have a cassette or it could have a free wheel, in which case, if you wanted to remove it, you'd have to find the exact uh, free wheel removal tool, or maybe it's a uniglide and you have to get two chain whips to kind of get it off. So do you see what I'm saying? When you get a 90s mountain bike, it's less a bike that you just ride and more a bike project. Reason number five, why you shouldn't buy a 90s mountain bike. And I think this is probably uh, the most significant reason. And, and that is fit, depending on which era of vintage mountain bike uh, you have. Although the head tube and seat tube angles are pretty similar to what we have today, the fit was pretty different. And by that, I mean the bikes had really, really low stack. That's why you see those mountain bike bars that you know shoot upwards and are super long. From a design perspective, I think that might have been done uh, so the rider would have kind of uh, standover clearance or crotch clearance while going off road while still using a level top tube. So the result is you have a bike that's in a super aggressive position. The, the saddle to handlebar drop is a lot. And if you want to get it at least equal, you're gonna have to do some things. Either get a really long quill stem or a dirt drop quill stem or bars with lots of rise. I actually experimented with the Rivendell Bosco bars, which had a ton of rise and swept back. And those bars didn't make sense to me until I put them on uh, this mountain bike. Then it made total sense. And that's why you see lots of vintage mountain bike builds with these riser bars, BMX bars, moto bars, whatever you want to call them. So I, I know people like to say that gravel bikes were just 90s mountain bikes. Well, 90s mountain bikes were kind of like 70s road bikes, but way lower stack. <laughs> I don't want you guys to think that I hate them, but I wanted to paint a more realistic picture. A lot of people that just flippantly say, go get a 90s mountain bike, they probably have a nice garage with, with lots of tools and are able to work on these bikes. But I personally had to buy more tools, uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to service uh, loose bearing headsets as well as uh, bottom brackets. I think if you put a cost on your time as well as expendables and tools, it's kind of, it's kind of a wash, right? If you've got no money and lots of time and can be patient and rummage through a bike co-op and, and work on your bike there, then I think they're better value from a monetary perspective, but not a time perspective. If you want a bike that you can just ride as a gravel bike with drop bars without having to flip through pages and pages of Sheldon Brown, then you're probably better off buying a new bike. If you want a bike project and the act of working on the bike brings you joy in of itself, then sure, definitely get a 90s mountain bike. I will say, I don't think it's for everybody. If that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, if you want an awesome deal on a previously loved bike, check out the link in the description below and see what the pros closet has. As always, everybody keep the supple side down.